This road, near the Palestinian village of Farqa in the West Bank, didn't exist a few months ago. It popped up in just three days after October 7th. It's one of 15 roads and five illegal encampments known as outposts that the Wall Street Journal found are being rapidly built all over the West Bank since October 7th. The journal found these roads are often being built in just a few days, partially with money from the Israeli government. According to videos the journal verified and local witnesses, much of this work is being done with unmarked construction vehicles, often under armed guard. In 1967, a small segment of Israelis began establishing communities known as settlements in the West Bank after its military occupied the area at the end of the Six-Day War. Settlements are illegal under international law, but legal under Israeli law. Over the years, some members of the movement began creating new small encampments known as outposts, which are illegal under both Israeli and international law. Now, researchers say, since October 7th, the pace of outpost and illegal road construction is surging. Take a look at this. Well, this is a new outpost. We're a few weeks old. Take a look here on the left hand side, you can see the roads which are being carved. New roads, new outposts. Uh, you can see them all over, but you need to know where to look for them. Israeli researcher and activist Dror Etkis has combed the West Bank tracking illegal road and outpost expansion since 2002. Roads are connecting outposts with settlements, are connecting outposts with outposts, they're connecting outposts with agricultural area, and they are also important um, borders which every Palestinian understands that he cannot cross. Geographic dominance. This is exactly what these old settlements, outposts, roads are all about. This is what it's all about. Many settlers say roads are built to avoid confrontations with Palestinians. And the Israeli government says if they see illegal construction, they take action, though they declined to review the journal's findings. According to the journal's analysis, the area near Farqa, a Palestinian town of around 1,800 people, has seen the biggest uptick in illegal roads and outposts since October 7th. In the West Bank, building roads legally is usually a multi-year process. Farqa's mayor, Mustafa Hamid, says the road near his town appeared in just a matter of days. He says whoever is responsible for the road is using the war in Gaza as cover. This road near Farqa is near this outpost, which is close to one of the largest settlements in the West Bank, Ariel. A road connecting them would extend the borders of these neighboring settlements and outposts and effectively cut off Palestinian access to much of the town's water supply and olive groves. And new roads could lead to new confrontations. Take a look on the right-hand side. You see this valley here? Three months ago, a uh, Palestinian was killed right here in the harvest. Everything was filmed. On October 28th, Bilal Saleh, a Palestinian farmer, was shot and killed while harvesting olives. His family and eyewitnesses say he was unarmed and murdered by a settler. The alleged shooter claims it was self-defense. He was arrested and released. The IDF says they're investigating. Violence is also being used to clear the way for roads like this. This used to be the Bedouin village of Wadi al Sikh. The Bedouins didn't have legal rights to the land, but they had lived here for years, until five days after October 7th. 
الظهر تفاجأنا بهجوم منسق طبعا يوم 12 اكتوبر Footage shared with the journal by local activists shows settlers driving out the community. المستوطنين الاسرائيليين المدنيين والمستوطنين لابسين جيش تاخذ المواشي تبعاتكم واولادكم وتطلعوا. Abu Bashar is a community leader and shepherd from Wadi Al Sikh now living on the outskirts of the village. بلشوا ربط بطح في الشباب على الارض وربطوا ايديهم اخذ الهوايا اخذ التلفونات كل شيء اخذوا منا حكوا لنا معكم ساعه بعد الساعه اللي يكون اي شيء بيمشي في وادي السيق راح نطلق عليه النار The IDF said they're still investigating the incident but confirmed that soldiers were involved and said the commander was relieved of his duty Over the next weeks the village was raised And then the road was built. Satellite images show it leads to this farming outpost. The outpost belongs to a settler leader named Nadia Ben Pazi, who has received grazing permits, agricultural grants, and security funding for farming in this area from the Israeli government. We visited the Ben Pazi outpost, and we could see what appeared to be two small living quarters, a guard post, and a shelter for animals. We tried to speak to Ben Pazi or anyone at the outpost. Hello? No, no, no. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to. Thank you. Why are you coming to the house, brother? This is the house, right? This is the house. Yes. I'm going to call you. A few miles north, a settler responsible for overseeing security on Ben Pazi's outpost did speak to us. Thank you, Hashem. This is a small one. עושה שירות משמעותי שהוא בעצם תופס 5,000 דונם במירה. אביחי סוויסה is the leader of an organization that provides armed protection to farming outposts in the area. Part of their funding to guard these illegal outposts also comes directly from the Israeli Ministry of Agriculture. ו... אז המדינה היא 75% מסך התקציב הכללי. יהודים מחול בערך עוד 15 אחוז, ו-10 אחוז זה תרומות מהארץ. For the past decade, the number of outposts he guards has been growing. על 2012-2013 אנחנו מדברים על 11 חוות, היום אנחנו ב-2024 עם 80 חוות. סוויסה and many settlers like him were once considered fringe. But over the past decade, with the increasing influence of the far right, Settlers have become a small but vocal part of the Israeli government. Pro-settlement politicians like Itmar Ben Gvir, who had previously been considered extremists by the Israeli government, have become cabinet ministers. Once these farming outposts are built up, Roads again become important for connecting them to established settlements. According to court documents, that's why this road was built. It connects an established settlement, Emmanuel, to an outpost called Aloni Shiloh. The first part of it had been built, had been carved illegally by settlers in 2014. Miraculously, something happened there, which very, very, very uh, seldom happens. You know, they had been caught by the city administration. They were actually trialed, and they had been convicted. Construction was stopped for years. Documents from the old court case show the work was done by employees of a company called Amana that received millions of dollars a year for development from local settlement governments. But satellite images show it was restarted and finished after October 7th. It's unclear who was responsible. Amana denies involvement. If there's no force which is willing to enforce the law and the system sees you as an enemy and your property as a target, who's going to help you? Who's going to help you? Mayor Hamid says for him and his village, there is little recourse left. <laughs> للأسف انصدمنا أن إسرائيل بحالة طوارئ ومتوقف المحاكم فيها خصوصا في قضايا الاستيطان 
In January, thousands of Israelis, mostly settlers, gathered for a conference in Jerusalem led by Ben Gvir and other Israeli government ministers. Their new ambition, settlements in Gaza. Thank <laughs> you. 